Hi, everybody. Welcome back to your Pro Tools lesson. My name is McKay Tabs, and today we're going to be covering Pro Tools 101. The so lesson three is basic audio track techniques. We're going to be talking about things like track types, uh, creating new tracks, how to route those tracks, how to show on eye tracks, how to name them, how to change their height, how to mute and solo tracks, delete them. We're going to mention how to import audio and work the workspace browser. So let's get started. All right, so here I have my Pro Tools session open. I just barely created it. Right now it's empty, it's blank. There's nothing in it. So the first thing I need to do is create tracks and put tracks in here. And there is a keyboard command. Help you do this really quickly. Shift Command N. And when you push Shift Command N, you get this window for creating new tracks. I'm gonna zoom into it a little here. Now there's different types of tracks you can create, and that's what this middle menu is for. Um, there's audio tracks, there's something called folder tracks, a routing folder and a basic folder, aux input tracks, masturbator, VCA master, MIDI tracks, and instrument tracks. So kind of a lot of options, and what do they all do? Uh, probably the one you're gonna use the most is the audio track. So you definitely wanna get some of those. Um, so let's keep this as audio. Let's have three of them in our session. So I just put create three mono audio tracks. I'm going to change it to be stereo, though. You see this little menu here where you can select mono or stereo or a whole bunch of different options for surround sound. Um, but we're going to make this a stereo, three stereo audio tracks. And then let's come over here and hit the plus sign. And when we do that, we create a second row. Um, this time, instead of stereo or instead of audio tracks, let's create some instrument tracks. Instruments are probably the second most common track you're going to be using. Um, audio tracks are first, instrument tracks are second. Um, and uh, instrument tracks are your MIDI tracks. And that's confusing when there's a natural MIDI track, right? But when you're trying to use a plugin and use a virtual instrument, select your instrument track. Um, and let's do that here. And then let's have three instrument tracks in the section. Let's also make them stereo. Once again, we're gonna hit that plus sign. So every time you ever work in Pro Tools, you always need to add one of these, a master fader. So always make sure to add a master fader. What the master fader does is it controls all the other tracks, all the faders on the other tracks. So it allows you to make sure that um, there's an overall volume level and, and that's how you control it. Um, so often students submit their work to me and they forget this master fader and I have to tell them, please put a master fader in your session. So just always plan to do this, put a master fader in your session. Do we have stereo tracks in this session? Yes. So doesn't it make sense that your master fader should also be stereo? Oh, well, yeah, I guess it does. So anyway, always match the master fader to the type of tracks you have. Um, so stereo tracks need a stereo master fader. And if you don't, you'll, you'll use it and, and it'll be weird. It won't work right. You'll hear it out of one speaker and not the other until you start to move the fader bar. So anyway, always match the, um, the, uh, the, the format of it. So we've got those going on. Um, and really quickly, just to give you a basic rundown of these other tracks, Folder tracks are for organizing. You can, when you have a, a lot of tracks in session, you can drop them into a folder track and then close that folder track. And it basically makes it easier to manage the tracks in your session. So there's two types of folder tracks. Aux input tracks are for when you're working with um, submixes and digital effects like delay and reverb. So it's very common to create an aux input track, put your delay on that, and then route that aux input track to all the tracks that you want delay on it, rather than putting delay on each individual track. And it saves processing power to do that. So that's one thing aux input tracks are for. VCA master, voltage control amplifier. Won't use this very often, but eventually you might get to the point where you do, but it allows you to control other tracks with this master track. Um, now, MIDI tracks, this is what's gonna be confusing. You're gonna think, I wanna work with some MIDI today and I'm gonna make a MIDI track and you'll do it and it won't work. Now, what happens is in order for a MIDI track to work, you need to use it in conjunction with an aux input track. 
And on the aux input track, you assign an instrument there, and then you route it to the MIDI track, and then together they work to, to have uh, MIDI sounds. But, you know, it takes two tracks to do that. So that was how Pro Tools originally uh, worked with MIDI. But later on, they created something called an instrument track, which is basically an aux input track and a MIDI track combined together. So in general, just choose the instrument track and you'll be fine. And later on, you can experiment with MIDI tracks if you want to. Okay, so I have all of my um, tracks created that I want to include in this session. So now I'm going to hit create. And when I do that, um, they all show up. And here they are. I have three audio tracks, three instrument tracks, and one master um, track. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to name these tracks because as they are, they're called audio one, audio two, audio three, instrument one, instrument two. It's all redundant. I want them to be specific themes or they're going to be a specific instrument. So on audio one, I'm planning to record my vocals there. So I'm going to double click on that nameplate and I'm going to write vocals. And now the name of my audio one track is now vocals. Now I'm going to rename audio to bass, but there is a shortcut. You can double click on each clack, uh, track and name them one at a time, but you could also use command and arrows. I've named this track bass, so now I'm going to push down command and hit the right arrow. And now that's going to take me to audio track three. And now I can name audio track three guitar. I'm going to keep that up, command right arrow. And now I'm down to my instrument tracks, and this is going to be my synth sound. And then I'm going to command, uh, command right arrow, and now I'm going to add, um, I don't know, I, I guess I'll add some drums on this track, some mini drums. And then command right, and then I'm going to name this track, uh, how about banjo? I mean, you saw me a banjo in it, right? So anyway, and if I do command left arrow, it goes to the previous track and I can rename it. So command right arrow to go forward, command left arrow to go backward. But after I've named all the tracks, I can push enter. And so by using that command, you can name them all in one window, one at a time, just by command and then the arrow. Um, so anyway, uh, now I've got my tracks created. I've got them named. I'm going to switch now to the mix window. This is the edit window we're currently in. And if I use command equals, I can switch back and forth between the mix window and the edit window. So here I am in the edit window. Now, this uh, in the edit window, we get a clear view of what's called the IOs, the ins and outs, inputs and outputs. And um, your tracks aren't going to work until you set your inputs and outputs. So that's why we're here is I, I quickly want to show you how to do that. Um, it's very important after you get a master uh, a master fader in your session, it's very important to double check and make sure it's active and make sure that it is set. If your master fader is grayed out, that means it is inactive. That means you don't have the output set. So you need to click on this output for the master fader and set it. And usually you'll just have a small list and you'll you'll pick your main out. See there, I picked one and now it's grayed out. So now my master fader isn't going to work. So I need to make sure that I select what my main outs are and now it's, it's live. Notice that a master fader does not have an input. Everything is input into the master fader. That's just how it works, but it doesn't have a, a separate input. So um, these other tracks, I wanna set the inputs and outputs on those. That's where I my audio interface kind of comes into play. My audio interface has two inputs at the moment. I'm using the Scarlett Focusrite. Um, there's two channels on it, channel one and channel two. So if I come here to my inputs, I'm going to see inputs one and two, stereo. Since it's a stereo track, stereo means two, it's automatically taking both my channels one and two, and it's routing them into this. And the good news here is I don't have to, um, I don't, really have to change these at all. But um, you always need to set them to make sure that the right microphone that's plugged into your audio interface is the one that's being routed into that track you're trying to record to. And then once again, same thing here on outputs, just make sure that you select the main output that's 
routed to your master fader. You just want to double check and make sure that you select your ins and outs. Anyway, that's something that if those aren't set, you're going to get started with this and it won't work and it's going to be sad and you're going to be frustrated. So you got to make sure that your inputs and outputs are set. This is the mix window in and out. If you go back to the edit window over here, you'll notice there's also the inputs and outputs. So you can actually do it from either window, um, depending on what you want to see in your window, but, but it's here, so you can access it there as well. Um, okay, so we also want to talk about uh, showing and hiding the tracks. Um, so up here we have what's called the tracks list. And um, I just want to show you the show hide option, which is these little circles on the side of it. If you want your track to show, then those circles need to be clicked. I just barely clicked them all off. So now my track, my, my, my session's empty again. So if I want to bring them back, then I have to click on them. And as I click on them, they will all come back. Uh, so that can be useful because sometimes you're working in a large session. It has like 50 tracks. And you don't want to see all 50 tracks at once because you're just working on one or two of them. So you can hide the ones you're not working on and make them so they're, un they're not there. And then that just helps to condense your view of what's going on in your session. So you can show and hide the tracks by clicking on their, their dots down there. You can also change the track order. I have vocals on top. I could take my vocals track, and click on it, and I could take my vocals track and click on it, and drag it down and drop it. And I could take my vocals track and I could click on it and drag it down and drop it. And if I do that, I, I change the order of what's going on. I could also put it down underneath the instruments track. I can take my banjo track and drag it up and drop it above the guitar track. So you can change the order of your tracks to be whatever order that you want it to be. And you just click on it and drag on it. Also, you can change the track size or height, how tall it is. Um, and the way you do that is on this ruler. Notice this far edge has what looks like a ruler on it. And if you click on that ruler, you get options. Right now we're viewing the medium option. If we want the small option, we can click on it and then we'll see it in small. You know, and you can do it one at a time or you could select all the tracks at the same time and you could click it once for all the tracks and have it affect those two. But anyway, you have options. There is a jumbo option here and it gets very large. And, and anyway, so experiment with track size, because sometimes you might want them really big when you're working on them. Sometimes you might want them really small. Um, each track is set up with a couple of buttons you need to be familiar with. There is the uh, S button, and S means solo. There's the M button for mute. And over here, we have the record enable button. And when you have the record enable button selected, it means that is the track you're going to be recording to. So if you're planning to record your guitar part, you've got to enable it. You've got to record enable that track. And after that, you can then come up here to the top where the record button is and push record and then play. And now you're recording a track. Um, I just barely started doing that and I just recorded something, but I wasn't playing anything. So it's like an empty clip. But anyway, the solo and the mute button are important because if you want to solo a track, so just that track is playing, you push this S button to solo. If you want to mute that track so you don't hear that track, you hear all the other tracks, you push the M button and that can solo and mute them. Okay, you can also delete tracks you don't want. And now that I think about it, I don't really want this banner track anymore. So I'm going to click on it and I'm going to right click. And as soon as I do that, there's a menu here and you just find the word delete. And now that banjo track is gone. So, so you can get rid of tracks that you don't want to have that way. Now, there are times when you're working in Pro Tools where you need to, when you need to import audio. So maybe you have some previously recorded audio clips that you want to be working with or some sound effects that you want to bring into your session. And there are two ways to do this. The most basic way is to go to your file menu and go import. And then 
audio, MIDI, video, video, clip groups. What do you want to import? Are you working with uh, a video file and you want to import that? Um, in this case, let's import um, an audio file. And when you do that, it opens up this import audio dialog box and you select the audio files that you want to import and then you push add. And notice that when I select it, it puts it here, clips the current file and then add button and then clips to import. And I'm gonna push open. And now I have a, a choice to make. Do I want these files to import to new tracks or do I just want to import them to the clips list? Uh, right now, uh, I haven't really told you what the clips list is, but I'm gonna just leave it on the new track and I'm gonna have them build new tracks as they import and I'm gonna push okay. And so now down here at the bottom are the four files. I just very imported them into my session and I can work with them. If you come up here to the top right corner, there is a drop down menu that allows you to um, control what you see. And let's add the clips list in here so we can see the clips list. It's very common to have a clips list up and running when you're working in Pro Tools. So here's my clips list, and I just selected a clip in the clips list, and this one got highlighted here. That means that's the clip that I just I clicked, or I, I clicked on. And so you can select the clips that you're working on there, and in any way, the, there's a clips list to help you to um, manage all the clips that you, you get and that you're working in. But there's one more place where you can import audio, and that's in your workspace browser. And I want to ask you to, to use this keyboard command, option I, option I. And when you do that, um, you are automatically able to see your workspace browser. So in this workspace browser, you have some drop down menus where you can um, find clips and preview them and decide if you like them. So it's important to know your workspace browser. Once again, that that uh, keyboard command is option plus I to open your workspace browser. All right, well, that wraps it up for today. Thank you for coming to today's Pro Tools lesson and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.